Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and in this video I'm going to talk about forensic science and today I'm going to explain how to understand, how to analyze CODIS data. And CODIS stands for the Combined DNA Index System. And this uh, Combined DNA Index System were invented by FBA in order to collect uh, genetic profiles of um, suspects, uh, victims, and uh, person who break a law in order to keep them all uh, this data in database so later whenever uh, any new evidence, biological evidence would be collected at the crime scene uh, that uh, genetic profiles can be uh, compared with data in this um, computer database. Um, I already made many videos explaining how CODIS system works, so today I'm not going to uh, talk long about it. Uh, I'm only going to briefly explain the principles and then I will talk uh, more about analyzing data. So, uh, as you see, there is certain CODIS uh, core STR LASI and uh, those uh, LASI, if we um, count, we would find some peculiarities, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. But you see that here it is said that there is 13 codes um, core STR LASI, and STR stands for the short tandem repeats. And um, that's why, because these two LASI is not included um, or um, considered to be STR short tandem repeats because here we just uh, compare two introns in homologous sequences on the X and Y chromosome um, in uh, X chromosome uh, one of the introns has a small deletion and uh, the same intron in the homologous gene on the Y chromosome doesn't have uh, that deletion. So when we run a gel, if this is going to be a male, we would see two bands, because one band uh, would be um, from X chromosome that is going to be a little bit shorter, and another from Y chromosome that is going to be a little bit longer, so these two bands would separate because uh, different molecular size. But if we would have two X chromosomes, uh, we would have here only one band. So uh, we use this as indicator whether this is a male or female profile. But uh, all the rest, certain uh, loci, uh, we have um, STRs, so this is short tandem repeats sequences and his example if we take this locus let's say we may have uh, such a repeat as um, t c g t that uh, can uh, repeat over and over again so t c g t t c g t so this is going to be a core sequence and this core sequence as you see repeated here three times. So we call this short tandem repeats. In uh, all uh, LASI, uh, all the repeats represent um, four nucleotides. So in any of this LASI uh, we have four different uh, core sequence but each core sequence consists of four nucleotides. Because all chromosomes in our genome present in two copies, we have 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs of chromosomes. In each pair of chromosome, we have one chromosome from our mother side, another chromosome from our father side. That's why we have two chromosomes number two, two chromosomes number three, two chromosomes number four and so on. And that's why when we run a gel and later we would uh, analyze uh, data that we got, 
uh, all lasses uh, would be uh, represented by two columns. So one would be number of repeats from, say, mother side, another column would be number of repeats from the father side, but actually uh, we don't know uh, whether this is mother side or father side. We can only tell this if we would analyze um, genetic makeup of parents, but we don't care. So uh, everything we care, we just need a number of repeats for each locus. And uh, these numbers would produce such unique um, sequence that can happen only one in a trillion. So if we analyze uh, data of any particular person, we might expect that uh, such uh, genotype would happen in uh, about one trillion people. So this is much more exceed than uh, population of our planet. As you see, DNA profiling is very reliable method and uh, it is as reliable as uh, um, fingerprinting. That's why uh, many people call this method uh, DNA fingerprinting. Thus, it has nothing to do with uh, fingerprinting process um, at all. So what other peculiarities we may see here? Uh, if we count number of uh, loci here, let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. As you see, uh, this exceed number of uh, STR loci in CODIS system. And uh, explanation would be simple because uh, CODIS system uh, or analogous programs in different countries may use different loci in order to build analogous um, program that analyze the data. In other countries, they may use uh, more loci, like 15 or 16 or even 20 loci. I don't know if um, CODIS system in United States still use 13 loci. Um, recent um, data collected from recent crime scenes can be analyzed uh, even in the more number of loci, uh, like maybe 15 or 20 and still uh, we need more loci in order to increase uh, power of exclusion and also we need this uh, because uh, sometimes when biological material is present in very small quantities some of the uh, loci can uh, be lost so when we run a gel because there is uh, not enough biological material, some of the loci or biological material can be greatly degraded, some of the loci can be lost and that means that we decrease power of exclusion. And uh, in order to keep uh, those numbers are very high, uh, we just increase number of loci and even if we, for example, would lose 5 loci out of 20, this would be not so critical uh, as if we would um, lose 5 loci out of 13. What are the peculiarities that I wanted to talk uh, about today? If you would take a better look, you would see uh, some peculiar uh, numbers here. And what does it mean? So we understand that uh, all the uh, Tandem repeats goes in discrete numbers, two repeats or three repeats, ten repeats. But what does this number means and this number, 9.3 and 23.2? First of all, as you see for this um, locus, that is TH01, um, uh, in a gene pool we can find um, five uh, loci between 5 and 10. So uh, on one of the chromosome we see that there is 6 repeats and uh, on the other chromosome we see uh, 9.3 repeats. What does it mean? Actually this means uh, following. 
I would use this example here. So as you see, we have three repeats here. And now let's imagine different situation. We have the same uh, sequence. So T, C, G, T, T, C, G, T. So two repeats and then T, C, T, C, G, T. So this time we have one repeat, two repeat, three repeats. But also we have uh, some of the uh, mutation here. Probably there was a deletion here of G and T. So only T and C left here. Or we may find, for example, A, A here. So we may probably have uh, inclusion here. So anyway, um, as you see, the size of uh, this um, molecule uh, and this molecule is different. And if we run a gel, these two molecules would separate and would make two bands. And uh, we call uh, this three repeats. And this one uh, that below it we would call 3.2. So 0.2 stands for the two extra nucleotides here. And for example, if we would have a different sequence, a different number of repeats, T, C, G, T, T, C, G, T, and T, C, G, and T, C, G, T. As you see, once again, we have one repeat here, second repeat here, third full repeat here, and here we have, uh, as you see, uh, three nucleotides. So two nucleotides here. So this time we would call this 3.3. .3. So uh, another variant that is possible would be if we would uh, have uh, one extra nucleotide, for example, T here, then we would call such uh, strength of the DNA 3.1. So, uh, as you see, uh, 3 possible, 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3. .3. But 3.4 or 3.5 is not possible, because if we would have 3.4, that means that we would have another full repeat. And we can call this not 3.4, but 4, 4 repeats. So that's why uh, we have here 23.2, that means we have here 23 full uh, 4 nucleotides repeats plus 2 extra nucleotides. And, and here we have 9 full 4 nucleotide repeats plus 3 extra nucleotides. And the last note would be uh, naming of this loci how to memorize them. As you see, for example, the first uh, locus here, it's named D8S1179 and D8. Uh, so any number between D and S uh, means a number of chromosome. So we can find this locus on the chromosome number 8. So this is uh, this chromosome here. So next D2, so we can find on the uh, chromosome number 2, but as I said, uh, not all um, loci here present on this picture. So um, next uh, we would have, uh, for example, D7, and we can find it on the chromosome number 7, and D3 we can find on the chromosome number 3. Next, uh, D13, uh, we can find on the chromosome 13, and so on. So, all these numbers between D and S means number of uh, chromosome. And uh, this is very easy to 
memorize and later to find these alleles on the uh, career type and another set of alleles has different names that wouldn't tell us on which uh, chromosome we can find these alleles. For example, this allele, this, uh, this, uh, I'm sorry, this uh, loci, this and this one, because this stands uh, for the names uh, of the gene. So this uh, loci we can find within genes, not within coding sequence, but within gene within non-coding sequence. As you know, gene consists of uh, introns and exons. So uh, we instantly know that this locus within intron of the gene, this locus within intron of the gene, this one, this one, this one, and um, the last two loci stands uh, separate from the rest because we need them in order to find sex of the person. Once again, uh, this loci that is circled with blue color we can find in uh, between genes, so this is would be non-coding sequence between genes and those um, circled with red color we, we can find within gene but still within non-coding sequence of the uh, introns. Why we cannot use, for example, exons? Because exons doesn't have uh, this variation, because any variation in exons would lead to mutations, so mutations does not tolerate it very well by our genome, but if a variation would be within non-coding sequence, this can be easily tolerated uh, whether it is uh, within uh, introgen space or within introns. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.